We know that the task step in a K2 workflow is used to create and assign tasks to human recipients, which include individual users, groups, and K2 roles, which are also groups of users defined in the K2 system. In the task step, K2 also allows us to configure who receives a task assignment by setting up recipient roles for a more dynamic recipient capability based on current workflow conditions or even values that come from smart objects and references to data within a form. Take for instance, you may have an expense approval or purchase order application that requires extra approval if an expense exceeds a certain dollar amount or comes from a specific department. I want to take a moment here before we jump into looking at recipient rules to define how the recipient section actually works. By default, this tab adds the workflow originator as a recipient immediately upon dropping the task step onto the design canvas. This assigns the task to the person that starts or originates a workflow instance. You can also switch to the originator's manager by clicking on this drop-down box and selecting that option. This will assign a task to the manager of the person who starts the workflow. Now, that hierarchy will need to be configured within your organization's user manager that K2 uses, such as Active Directory. You can also click on this dropdown, select Browse, then look up anyone else within your organization, or look up a group like Sales if the sales team as a whole needs to get the task assignment. I'm going to add Holly as this recipient because I'm actually going to use that in a scenario in just a moment. If you want to add more individual users or groups, you can click on the plus button here to open more recipient options. To remove a recipient, just select one and click on the trash bin button, or you can select and drag the recipient to the trash bin. If you would like to make a recipient slot more dynamic, meaning the designation comes in from a data source, you can click on the pencil icon next to a recipient box to open it for editing. Remove any of the default entries that may happen to be there. Then you can open the context browser up here on the right and use a field from a reference or data source like a smart object that has a valid user entry. Select that field and drag it over to the recipient box. When this task step executes, K2 is going to resolve that recipient value from the reference and send the task to that person accordingly. Be sure that the data coming in through a reference like this is an actual valid user so that K2 can send tasks to that person. One other option offered here is the ability to create recipient groups within the task. Now, there may be instances where you need to selectively assign a task based on data from a data source to specific groups. I'll get to a scenario like that in just a moment. But basically, K2 gives you an option to create recipient groups and use them in recipient roles to determine where tasks should be assigned. To paint this picture better, let's create a group by clicking on the Add Group link. When we do this, it opens up a new group section where we can add more recipients for a task assignment. Notice there is a name for this group as well. Let's make this a meaningful name. So in this example, I'll rename this group to Human Resources and Managers by clicking on the word group. Then I'll enter in that text. We can add groups, K2 roles, and individual users to this group now. So let's add a K2 role called Human Resources to cover that department. Okay, that looks good. Now let's add Neil. and also Kirsten as our higher level managers for the organization. With our recipients set up, let's dig a little deeper into a very simple scenario. Let's say we have an application for handling new employees from the process of interviewing up to onboarding. In the interview process, a potential new employee sends in a resume for a position that will have the job title of Chief Security Officer. With any title that contains the word chief, we need to have all resumes of potential candidates go to Holly, as well as the recipients in the Human Resources and Managers group of which we just created. That's where a recipient rule comes into play. Let's select the option to define certain recipients instead of just having all recipients receive all tasks. To edit the rule, I'll click the Edit button here to go into the Rules Editor. This is going to behave like a typical if-then condition statement that you might see in a given computer coding language. 
Except here we can configure this in sort of a building block fashion. To demonstrate, I want to pull over the job title field value that comes in from the form that starts this workflow. So we can expand the new hire employee reference in the context browser up here on the right. Drag the job title field over to the open slot just after the if condition. Then for the comparison operator, click on the equal sign and change it to contains. Also at the same time, notice all the other options here. If you're comparing numbers, you can use things like the greater than operator. For text, there are a few others like starts with and ends with. For this case, I'll select contains since this is a text search I'm making. I'll also enter the word chief to the right side of the contains icon in the if condition. So basically, if this condition is met, I want both Holly and the human resources recipient group we created to get tasks for review. Under the then section, we can click the recipient group dropdown and select Holly along with the HR group. For the else part of the condition, I'm just going to select Holly because our organization is small enough that she can handle reviewing all the other resumes. That will do it for our requirements. Obviously, these rules can get much more complex depending on your requirements, so you can refer to the user guide at help.k2.com for more help on building recipient rules and recipient lists with groups. As seen here in the example, you can nest more if-then statements and add multiple recipient groups where needed. To recap, when this workflow step executes, K2 will assign tasks to Holly and the Human Resources group if the job title is one of the titles with the word chief in it. Otherwise, all other submissions will just be assigned to Holly.